I am so incredibly excited today with Clovers because I am doing what is probably my most craziest vlog idea yet. So hi, welcome or welcome back if you are new here. My name is Gavin and today, or should I say tonight, all night long baby, we are going to travel to Glasgow to take the Caledonian sleeper train all the way to London so I can spend the entire night trying to solve a murder mystery before I reach the end of the line. Will we solve it before we arrive to London? You'll have to stick around and find out. And honestly, do this the public is so weird. <laughs> I am currently in Newcastle Central Station right now, waiting for my first train, which is in nearly an hour, but I thought I would try and get here a little bit earlier so that I can, you know, get started and get really going. Don't even know if you can hear me right now, but a little bit of context behind this video is I'm a little bit of an insomnia, and one night last month, I was lying in bed until like 2 a.m. in the morning. 16.35. I have to wait until these announcements. <laughs> so I was going on YouTube, and I was recommended a video at like, this is a security message. We'll sort it. See it, it say, say it, it sort it. it. So I got recommended a video of somebody on a sleeper train in Japan, and I'd never seen a sleeper train before. I was like, what is that? So color me intrigued. I watched the video and it looked so good. And a couple of things. One, I thought I want to do this ASAP. But then two, I was like, well, how could I do it and make it appropriate for me? So that's when it hit me. And I put on my Instagram story because I was just that excited. I needed to share that with everyone else that maybe I should try and solve a murder mystery on a sleeper train. And then I researched it and came across the Caledonian sleeper train which has a few options but one of the best ones for me was an overnight train from Glasgow to London because that would give me just over seven hours to read a full novel. So my full journey today begins at Newcastle with a train to Edinburgh I then change over at Edinburgh to get a train to Glasgow which is where I have a three hour wait before boarding the Caledonian sleeper train to London. There are so many announcements about delays and cancellations that I'm actually worried I might not meet my um, train to well, I get the train to Edinburgh and then from there to Glasgow. So I'm worried I might not get my connecting train just with all of these delays and cancellations. There's so many congestions on the train tracks apparently that I'm just a little bit worried. I am quite worried and nervous that I might not end up making my Caledonian Sabre train because actually I was supposed to go on Friday. I was supposed to go Friday night, but it was cancelled last week because of rail strikes. So I ended up moving it to today, got delayed to today. So like, <laughs> it's already been delayed. I can't delay it anymore and I'm already here. I'm at Newcastle. I need to get on this train. I need to do this, like today. It's now or never. Now or fucking never. That was close but I am on my train now to Glasgow so I did make it I did manage to also get Costa and something to eat because I'm starving and I need this it was a bit of a close call as well because I got a text saying due to shortages we are very sorry and then honestly my heart plummeted because I thought shit this is probably I'm getting cancelled again but actually it's just shortages on food and drinks so that's fine I'm gonna take some food on there with me but if they had cancelled it as I was already on the train to Glasgow I would have but yeah, it is nearly 7 p.m. and I will arrive at Glasgow about 8 p.m. and then boarding on the Sabre train commences at 10 p.m. So I do have a couple of hours in Glasgow and hopefully there are things open that I can, you know, peruse in. I will let you know exactly what I'm reading when I'm on the Sabre train as well. So yeah, we are on our last journey, our last leg to get to the Sabre train. Welcome aboard our Scotrail service to Glasgow Central High Level. 
Thank you. Oh, I hope this is the right room. <laughs> oh, wow. It is tiny. It's tiny. Oh, this, look, this is it. Like, what a top bunk, bottom bunk? Who knows? <laughs> okay, this room is tiny, but that's fine. All I needed for was to read, all right? I also needed to drink my Prosecco. Literally opening it right now, because I've had such a stressful journey, not gonna lie. And stress is always fixed with some Prosecco. Mm. Oh, that's so good. I don't think two is going to be enough, in all honesty. So yes, I have made it onto my sleeper train. The train actually doesn't leave for like another hour. You're probably thinking, what are you reading? Because I don't think I've actually told you what I'm reading in this vlog. Well, I've decided to pick 450 from Paddington by Agatha Christie. I've never read this before and I haven't seen any adaptations of it either. So I have no idea what this is about. I assume it's on a train, which is why I picked it because I'm on a train. <laughs> I have read some Agatha Christie books before. I actually read my first Agatha Christie books at the start of this year and I have a reading vlog for them. I read four books and they were all for the first time. One of them I'd seen the adaptation for, the other three I hadn't. So I ended up guessing who killed the, the people, who was the culprit in the three that I'd never seen or read from before. And not gonna lie, I feel a little bit cocky and confident right now that I can do it again. I'm gonna leave a link to that reading vlog down in the description box. I'm pretty proud of it. I really love that vlog. Doesn't in case you wanted to say what I thought of them, I even guessed the murderer in the murder of Roger Ackroyd. I guessed who did it. So does that mean I have the ultimate sleuth and skills? Am I better than Poirot? Who knows? I think this is Miss Marple as well. I've actually never read a Miss Marple book before. This is my first Miss Marple book. And there's no summary or anything on the back or anywhere of this so I can't tell you what it's about until I actually start reading it. I also picked this one because I think it's pretty good to pick a really old murder mystery in order to read for this vlog so that if you haven't read this book that's absolutely fine. You can either stop watching now, I'm sorry to say you go, we can stop watching it now because this will be filled with spoilers. I want to go in depth in my theories on who the killer is and I don't want to spoil it for you guys if you do genuinely want to read this so maybe pause this vlog, go read this and then you know come back. But if you don't really care about being spoiled for an Agatha Christie book or for this book in particular then continue on. So yeah I might end up relaxing for a bit lying down not gonna lie I had a bit of a headache on the train here and I was worried it would get even worse but fortunately it's gone and you know what I think it's the power of Prosecco I think it's gotten rid of my headache. There's also this kind of sleep kit from the Caledonian sleeper earplugs eye mask and soap so I might end up just you know for the next hour just lying down getting prepped getting prepared for starting this murder mystery you know I've got to get in the zone I've got to try and get a little bit more rest beforehand because I'm going to be up all night. I'm going to be up all night. I feel bad. I feel bad for the people who are actually sleeping in the rooms next to mine because I see how small this place is though. I see how small it is. So no doubt the people on either side will be able to hear me all night long. So I will try and refresh for the next hour. Okay, this is really naughty. I might also see if there's any kind of um, action on EO grind. On, on the Caledonian. Who knows tonight, maybe there'll be more than one train enter in the tunnel. And just live a little, you know, like when in Glasgow. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's 
better. Do I order room service? Can I order room service? It doesn't really tell you how to do it. Like there's a menu for it, but it doesn't tell you how. How do I order? Because I know that I can only get snacks because there was a, a text saying that they have a shortage so they can't do proper meals and sandwiches and things. But also, can I just get like alcohol? There's no number. There's no number to ring or anything. Also, watch this. Watch this. <laughs> I'm so tempted to just sack this vlog off and go to sleep. Not gonna lie. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Actually, there is a, a host call there. So I wonder if that's maybe how you do it, but there's a part of me that's like a little bit nervous, a little bit nervous to even touch it. I just feel like maybe I shouldn't. Also, actually the lighting's not too bad here. Hmm. I'm gonna turn off the light and I wanna show you outside. We still haven't left yet. Well, this is cozy. <laughs> There's a baby crying next door. Good job, I don't want to go to sleep. Actually, before we set off, I think it would be absolutely detrimental, if that's the right word, to kind of have a little bit of a dance party, you know? Like, blast music in my headphones and really get pumped to stay up all night reading, you know? Yeah, I feel like this is like the only correct way of doing this sleeper train journey. So while I can't show you, I can't show you me doing my dance party because of copyright reasons. Just know that I am tearing, I am living it up. I'm having a little party in this little room. Good legs. As we go on, we remember all the things had together. As our lives change, come whatever, we will still be friends forever. It's almost time, guys. It's almost time to leave the station. Like five minutes, five minutes ago, and then we will properly start reading. I promise. I promise. I feel like that dance workout really reinvigorated me and really helped me to wake up. It also doesn't help that I've almost finished my first little bottle of Prosecco, so I knew I should have bought five or six. Guys, I accidentally pressed the horse call button instead of the light. <laughs> right, if they come, I'm going to have to order something. Probably the, the Prosecco or something. Oh god, I can't believe I did that. Literally, we haven't even left yet and I've ordered room service by accident. So close you are, I accidentally clicked that instead of that. Stupid, stupid. <laughs> Hello, sorry. Hey. <laughs> I was just wondering when I'm um, able to order room service, is it too early? No, you can order some. Is yeah. that alright? Yeah, just more hot food, just uh, drinks and snacks. No, or is it, yeah. it alright to order like a bottle of Prosecco? Yeah, definitely. It's alright, sorry. Uh, do I just pay for it when it comes or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> oh, I haven't even left the station. I accidentally hit the horse call button. Oh, uh, at least I know how to order room service now. <laughs> he must be thinking, wow, I haven't even left yet, and he's getting a bottle of Prosecco. Jesus Christ. Now let's begin the journey. I cannot believe I've done that, but I do now have an extra bottle of Prosecco and I have a cup now too, so that's good. So now I'm one Prosecco down, two to go. So essentially I'm gonna be mortal by the time I get to London. I'm gonna start reading 4.50 and Panting now that we have set off. And I have seven hours to read all of this and figure out who the killer is. So I have my pencil because I ain't highlighting this. It's too pretty in addition to highlight and annotate. I've got my pencil. I'm gonna underline and rub out when I need to and find out who the killer is in 4.50 from Paddington by Agatha Christie.
I've just finished the first chapter and I feel like I get a sense of what this story is already going to be about. Now with previous Agatha Christie books sometimes they take a little while to get into. This one just went no waiting around bitch we're getting straight into it. Also the Prosecco that I got from the train is so much better than the ones I bought from M&S. So in the very first chapter we have a lady called Elspeth McGillicuddy? McGillicuddy? Elspeth McGillicuddy? Board a train and as she's on this train she looks out the window and she says in the train that comes past a murder. I mean that's so interesting for one like that's quite exciting to start off with because that literally happens on page four. We're talking page four and we're getting right to it. So Mrs. Mc... I'm gonna struggle especially since I'm having a drink I'm already feeling a little bit tipsy. Mrs. McGillicuddy she says it and the narrator says now, standing with his back to the window and to her was a man. His hands were round the throat of a woman who faced him and he was slowly, remorselessly strangling her. Her eyes were starting from their sockets. Her face was purple and congested. As Mrs. McGillicuddy watched fascinated, the end came. The body went limp and crumpled in the man's hands. So this murder happens on the other train. She reports it to the ticket inspector and she doesn't really know if he's actually going to report it or not because he thinks that she was just like having a dream or reading the book. So Elspeth has gone to St. Mary Mead, which is the place where Miss Marple lives. Now I only know that because in the introduction it says, like I didn't read all of the introduction because I was worried it would spoil something, but at the start of the introduction it says about St. Mary Mead and the fact that Miss Marple lives there. So it looks like Elspeth has gone to Miss Marple. Is Miss Marple's first name Jane? Because the end of the first chapter says, Oh Jane, she wheeled, I've just seen a murder. So is it Jane Marple? Okay, so at the start of chapter two, Miss Marple merely raised her eyebrows and shook her head and said, Most distressing for you, Elspeth, and surely most unusual. I think you had better tell me about it at once. Miss Marple, straight away, she's here, she's ready to get her sleuthing on, as am I. As am I, I'm telling you, this pencil and me, we're about to have a really fun time tonight. And I mean, it, because I'm going to be underlining things. No. Anyway, let's continue. It is just past midnight now and I need to get a move on. I need to get a move on if I'm going to solve this murder mystery by the time we reach the end of the line. I should probably tell you as well that this book is 242 pages long. I'm not going to update every single time I finish a chapter, but I have gotten more information on who the victim is, who the culprit might be from Mrs. I cannot remember her name. McGillicuddy. McGillicuddy. Could Agatha Christie not have picked an easier name to pronounce? Did she not realise that I was going to be on a super train at midnight, on that midnight train at Georgia, reading this book? Interesting developments have happened as well. So in terms of the man, the, the suspect that we are looking for, Mrs McGillicuddy never saw his face, but she did see that he was tallish and dark, I think. He had a heavy cord on so that I couldn't judge his build very well. And literally that's all she could give us. The victim, she was youngish, between 30 and 35. She had on a fur coat of some kind, a palish fur, no hat, her hair was blonde. And then Miss Marble and McGillicuddy end up theorising that if a murder happened it would be in the morning paper except nothing's in the paper nothing has been reported about this crime so the body has just not been found even Sergeant Cornish who is like the police officer he takes the statement and makes some inquiries but nothing has been said nobody's been taken to hospital nobody's been found nothing like that what's going on what is going on so without a body and without more information on the suspect I can't tell you anything. <laughs> I have no theory so far, which, you know, I'm only on chapter three, so not surprised. As soon as I meet a suspect, hopefully, hopefully, you know, my heart will ring true and tell me if they're the fucker who did it, you know, because it was fucking one of them. Disgusting. So in terms of updates, I will probably only update when something important comes up and I might check in every hour as well and say how far I'm in and if I've got anything for you. We'll just play it by ear, you know, this is like the first time I've done something like this. Well, apart from the Agatha Christie vlog, but like done something like this on a train, you know, on that midnight train going anywhere. While people are asleep over there and people are asleep over here. So I'm trying to be so mindful of other passengers and hopefully, hopefully I can solve the crime without being too loud. Maybe when I get halfway through, I might have a break, especially if I'm getting sleepy. If I'm starting to get sleepy, I might have a bit of a dance break, a bit of a dance party again and liven myself up a little bit more. My underlining is shit. <laughs> you seen that? I should probably slow down on the Prosecco. 
We've currently stopped off at a station. Nobody's getting on or off. Where are we right now? Costas. Costas. Never heard of it. I hope we haven't stopped because of problems. Could you imagine? <laughs> the train has started up again, so fortunately we are not stuck. We are not stuck on the tracks. Update time, it is 20 past one. I am 55 pages into the book and now we have some suspects, or at least I think they're suspects. They might not be. We found the body. So Miss Marple has gone to somebody called Lucy Isla's Barrow and has gotten her to kind of go on a mission to find this elusive body. Now, the main theory that is going on is that the person who murdered this unknown woman pushed her from the train and it happened at some kind of dip or curve on the tracks so that when she was pushed, her body wouldn't exactly be found because it would have went down a hill or whatever. So Miss Marble has figured out whereabouts it should be and it's led to, is it Richardson Hall? So Lucy has become a sort of caretaker kind of person at this hall where a few people live so this is why i'm like i don't know if these people are actually going to be suspects but surely the suspects have to be people who we meet right they can't just be a random stranger on the train i just don't think that would make a good murder mystery and i think agatha christie knows that will make a good murder mystery so it has to be somebody we meet right it could be a randall and absolutely good it would probably be a bit too much of a coincidence which is why it has to be somebody living at what is it richardson hall which is why it has to be someone there, right? Because Miss Marple has said that this had to have been premeditated because it's too much of a coincidence that somebody would push this woman from the train at a very convenient place because if they'd done it at any other time, then surely the body would have been found and they would have not gotten away with it. So it had to have been at that exact moment on the train. So it was premeditated and the body, when Lucy goes to see if she can find it on this hill, is not there. And she does find evidence that the woman was there because she finds some fur and then she goes to I think it's Richardson Hall and we have the uh, old gardener called Old Hillman and he says you be careful you don't get a nasty fall miss now that was my first clue that maybe Old Hillman is the killer I don't know just something about him saying you be careful you don't get a nasty fall miss when she comes back from the place where she finds the fur and things and from like the dip from this railway tracks right so it's just the wording it's the wording it might mean nothing and then we do end up meeting alexander who i think is like i'm not great with characters especially in like agatha christie novels or like any older novels i'm usually really bad at characters and familial kind of connections but i think alexander is the son of the people who live at richardson hall so alexander and lucy they go to the kind of shed thing in this place and Lucy says that it's like such a mess and like everything's kind of needs looking after. So Lucy says this could really do with a clear up. Alexander says, I shouldn't bother. It gets cleaned up if it's going to be used for anything, but it's practically never used this time of year. So he's kind of like deterring Lucy from doing anything with this place, right? And then when he goes, she sees the sarcophagus and inside the sarcophagus is the body of the woman who was murdered on the train. So that is kind of my sliver of suspicion for Alexander. I mean, I'm grasping at straws. I am grasping at straws here, okay? But I need suspects. I need suspects. So it's whole for Hillman and Alexander are my two suspects of the person who killed the woman on the train. We definitely know it was a man, and that's pretty much about it. <laughs> Other than that, he was tallish and dark with a heavy coat on. And that's it. That's all we know. So yeah, I swear, as soon as I meet any person, any man in this book, instant suspect, instant suspicion to me, okay? But at the moment, I am rather clueless. I know I'm grasping at straws, but who knows, maybe one of them is the killer. I will be so impressed and so surprised if they are. I really will. But let's read on. Let's see if I can figure out some more clues. We are currently going through Carlisle. It is now 2.25 a.m. And I'm only 94 pages into this. I'm starting to worry that I'm not going to finish this in time. <laughs> I seem to be going a bit slower than I usually do. But I have a couple more suspects. More things have happened. Miss Marple has been MIA. She's let Lucy do all the heavy lifting for her. And she's buggered off. I mean, seeing that though, I see the start of chapter 10, she is present. So she is back. But anyway, let's talk about these suspects. 
So we also got introduced to two of the people in the family, two brothers in the family. One of them is called Cedric and the other one is called Harold. Cedric is a bit of an artist. He's described as a big man with a weather-beaten rugged face, unkempt dark hair and a jocund manner. I don't know what the fuck that means. But the suspect was said to be dark and I wonder if maybe that means dark hair because Cedric has dark hair. Harold is tall and the man was described as tall and also has dark hair was slightly bald on the temples and he dresses well and he's a city gentleman so he's definitely a lot more respectable than Cedric. Cedric has also lived six years in Ibiza and so he's more of a kind of globetrotter kind of character and the victim is apparently from a different country and Emma who was like the kind of like matriarch of the family automatically assumed that the victim was French even though there was kind of no indication that she was French she just said that she was French and that was very suspicious, very weird. So Emma definitely can't be a suspect because it was a man who was described as the killer, but maybe Cedric, just because he, you know, was in Ibiza, there are ties to him going to foreign places, and the victim is described as foreign, potentially French. Cedric did also come back to England the day of the murder, the 21st of December. The inspectors don't think he did it because he was coming from Ibiza to England on that day. So Cedric flew straight from Mallorca, so that's where he was at this time. He lives in Ibiza, but he was coming from Mallorca, and he said, yes, left at five in the morning and got here at midday. I can't remember what time the murder took place. Could he have gotten the 450? But if it's midday and Mrs. McGillicuddy got the 4.50 from Paddington, 4.50 p.m. I am assuming, which means Cedric surely was there, or at least like maybe he got the train from London after arriving. You know, maybe he spent a few hours in London and stayed there before getting on the train to Rutherford Hall. So like Cedric could have been there, he could have done it because he was there for a week, pretty much and before we went back to Mallorca and then came back for the inquest of this body. Cedric is also very into murders and he loves whodunits. So that's really interesting. So yeah, maybe Cedric. Cedric is now my suspect. So I've had a few suspects, <laughs> but now I mean suspect is Cedric. And I will tell you before I get to the actual reveal and stuff later, I will tell you my final, final suspect <laughs> and we'll see if I'm right. But yeah, so far my money's on Cedric, but we have had a few suspects so far that I think it could be. But now Miss Marple is back. So I believe she will start giving us all the info we need because she needs to start lifting her weight. This is her book. This is a Miss Marble book and she's done barely anything so far. Hopefully I can see it. I cannot believe I'm this tired already. It's only 2.30 a.m. and I'm not even 100 pages in yet. It's now 3.50 a.m. and we are currently oh near Manchester. Okay. So I think we're pretty much halfway from our journey. You know, if we started from Glasgow our end game is London. Yeah, I would say we're about halfway through, which is actually amazing because I am on page 151, which means I have around about 90 pages left of this. And honestly, I, I, <laughs> I'm not really that like much the wiser of who it is, mainly because I don't think there's been really any good clues, like anything I can really sink my teeth into, or anything too obvious just yet of who's done it, mainly because as well, I think we haven't really pinned down who the victim is, or what the motive is, like we have nothing, and again, Miss Marple has vanished, she is doing nothing, she's doing nothing to help this investigation, we actually are following like two detectives who are asking all the questions, and also I think I mentioned before that Emma was like the matriarch, She's the sister of Cedric and Alfred and Harold. So for some reason I thought she was like the mum, but she's not, she's the sister. And she actually gave us a revelation and she said that another brother that they had who was killed in the war 
married a French girl called Martine and she reveals a letter that they got about a month beforehand from Martine saying that she had had the brother's child and she wanted to come visit and then Emma was very welcoming she wanted her to come over and then I think a few days before she was due to come over Martine said she had to go back to Paris like urgently and then somebody was murdered on the 21st of December so who is the person who was murdered so it seems like it might be Martine at the minute and there's also kind of a theory that it is someone called Anna Stravinska who could have been posing as Martine. Who Anna Stravinska is, I kind of had no freaking clue. I think Anna Stravinska was Harold's first wife, who I think is also French. Honestly, I'm trying to follow along. I'm tired, okay? I'm tired. But for some reason, we're focusing a lot on the brothers, like Cedric and Harold and Alfred. And now, because we're focusing so much on them, I'm thinking, I don't think it's them then. I think it might be, who did I originally say as well? Alexander, the one who tried to deter Lucy from looking in the sarcophagus. And also, Alexander, when the body was first found, Alexander really wanted to see the body. When the inspector is at the barn, and this is quite early on after the body's been found, Alexander says, please sir, can we see the body? And Inspector Bacon, Inspector Bacon, says no, you can't. And then Alexander says, oh sir, please sir, you never know. We well, might know who she was. Oh please sir, do be a sport. It's not fair. He has a murder right now on Bond. It's the sort of chance that might never happen again. Do be a sport, sir. He's just like very intent on saying this body, this dead body. And it, I don't know, like that stuck with me. That has stuck with me. But we haven't really focused on Alexander as a suspect at all, which is what is making me think he might be the one who did it. Because again, we are focusing a lot on Harold. We are focusing on Alfred. We're focusing on Cedric. It can't be any of them because we're focusing too much on them. Right, I just want to find out who the victim is at this point. I just want to know who they are. A definite person who we have murdered so we can find out the motive, so we can find out who did it. Because again, it's just, it's too hard. So I might try and read up until before the reveal and then maybe film my reaction of the reveal like I did with was it the murder of Roger Ackroyd? I filmed my reaction to it and yeah, I, I want to do that again. And I still have some Prosecco left, so I'm going to save the rest of the Prosecco for the reveal because I like having a bit of wine or a bit of Prosecco when a big reveal happens in an Agatha Christie novel. What is it, like three hours before I arrive at London? So I have three hours to read 90 pages and figure out who did it. I think we've got this. I think we've got this. It is currently 5.03 a.m. And we are near Birmingham, so we are well over halfway on the journey. We have run about two hours left. I am now on page 212 of this. It's actually gotten really chilly, so I'm under the blankets. Also, I'm getting rather hungry, and by rather hungry, I mean I'm starving. But uh, I believe I have breakfast included. He did ask if I wanted coffee with my breakfast when I got on the train, so I, I think it's included. I better check that. Otherwise, I'm going to have to order room service again. Anyway, developments happen. Developments happen. Things got a little bit exciting. But again, I just, I don't really, I can't 100% say who it is. My money is still on Alexander at the minute. Things just seem to be a little bit off with him. And we did have an incident where the family got arsenic poisoning. And it seems like the grandfather the one who owns the estate and things he is being targeted for poisoning but the whole family got poisoned and alfred ended up dying so we had a death we had another death and that was rather interesting but they think that one of the other people who got you know ill was faking their symptoms and is probably the murderer alexander wasn't one of them though alexander wasn't there so i don't know if it was him i don't know but a huge development is alexander's friend who we got introduced to early on james stoddard west okay james stoddard west alexander and him are really good friends and alexander has gone to stay with james and james's mum has come along i must tell you something that i had never intended to tell you you say i am martine james's mum lady stoddard west has revealed that she is martine she is the one who people think is the dead body in the sarcophagus and the one who married Edmund, except they intended to be married 
and then he went to Dunkirk, was reported missing, and then later killed. So they didn't actually marry, but she is the one who fell in love with Edmund and ended up having a child who is James. Now it isn't specified exactly if James is Edmund's son, which would make Alexander and James cousins? because Alexander's Edmund's nephew. So the letter that Emma got about, you know, visiting and having a child and things, it was an imposter, it was from an imposter. There was no letter from Martine. So who is the actual dead woman? Was she trying, like, they haven't theorized this yet, but was she trying to con the family out of money? And did one of the brothers find out about it and killed her? Was it Alexander? I'm not sure why it would be Alexander though. I feel like for a motive, he doesn't really have a motive, but I just think he hasn't been focused on enough. And the fact that Alexander is friends with James, whose mum has turned out to be Martine, is also a little bit suspicious. I'm on 212 of 242, so I wanna go back to read a couple chapters. I don't think there is a reveal coming up yet of who the killer actually is, because the chapter I've just finished doesn't say, oh, this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell you who the killer is. Like, it happens in the borrow books. I do wanna try and get my reaction when I read who the killer is, and try and give you my final, final predictions before that happens too. But I just, I can't tell when it's gonna happen yet. I can't tell. It's not as predictable as the way Poro reveals it and I love the way Poro reveals it don't get me wrong but yeah I'm a little bit stumped so and also I'm just so hungry and tired I am I'm hungry and tired don't get me wrong this was so fun I'm just excited to find out who the killer is now like I just need to know put my mind at ease okay so Miss Marble who has been MIA for like pretty much the rest of this book has come back and she's talking to Lucy about the crime and um, who she thinks the killer is gonna be. So I, I still am not sure though. I'm still not sure. She's been very coy. I'm like, Miss Marple, how the fuck do you know you haven't even done anything? So I guess I'm still gonna say Alexander. It does look like Cedric is the most likely. Oh, and Harold died. Harold got some poison tablets and died. Now it is time to find out who the murderer is. And you know what, it's starting to make me worry that, like, she doesn't think Lucy has anything to do with it, right? Because it's starting to give me vibes of another Christie novel I read that I'm not mentioning because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who wants to read that one. But I'm starting to get a bit worried about, about Lucy. But then I think Lucy isn't a tall man. So obviously she isn't the murderer. Right, I'm just going to read. I'm going to read. I only have, like, 15 pages left, so we've got to find out who the hell it is. What? It seems like Miss Marple's baiting Lucy. It can't be. Lucy can't be. I don't get it. It's making her look like Lucy's getting... Right, we're on the last chapter, so Charlie, this is <laughs> the one. Elspeth McGillicuddy's back to talk about what she saw again. And I'm like, well, she told us everything she knew, right? Miss Marble wants Elspeth to do something odd. What? I was about to say this person, I'm not going to lie, because Harold got a couple of poison pills, as I mentioned, from Dr. Quimper, but then Dr. Quimper said, that wasn't me, you know, and that uh, case that came in came from the hall, and I just totally breezed by it, I thought this isn't worth mentioning, because... It was Dr. Quimper, and that's a very clever thing that Miss Marple just did. She just pretended to, like, choke on a sandwich so that Dr. Quimper would, like, go behind her and try to, like, get the thing out. And in doing so, she got Elspeth to see 
the back of him, which was the only thing she saw of him on the train when he was murdering that woman. But I just don't understand how and why. I, I didn't even, I never mentioned Dr. Quimper in this vlog because I genuinely did not think. God damn it. <laughs> you devilish old hag. Oh. And also, still, who's the woman? She wasn't a strange woman. She was your wife. Dr. Quimper murdered his wife. And yes, Miss Marble starting in the final chapter with, so you see, it really turned out to be, as I began to suspect, very, very simple. You've been MIA for the majority of this book, Miss Marble. You have no right. I've been here the entire time. How dare you? When I finish this book off, I'll wrap it up. I think the sun's going to be coming up soon. It is 5.37am. I believe sunrise is at 6am. So I'm going to finish this book. We can watch the sunrise together and put an end to my misery. My murder, mystery, misery. Oh my god, I just did a wrap up and I didn't even click record. <laughs> See, not only could I not solve this, I also can't even click bloody record. What is wrong with me? Okay, I'm so bitter right now that I didn't solve it. I'm so butthurt. I am so upset I didn't solve it. I don't even think you could really solve it. I found the doctor reveal to be a little bit out of nowhere. Also, the fact that his wife has been dead for like, what, three weeks? He's the village doctor and nobody realised that the doctor's wife has been dead for three weeks or missing for weeks. Yeah, what is going on there? You know, it wrapped up in the last five pages and I just feel like that was just a bit too quick and there should have been a bit more build up to it Miss Marble was barely in this so I was really disappointed with that but it had a fantastic story to begin with like seeing a murder through a window girl on the train eat your heart out but it just let it down I think with who it actually was trying not to be bitter but I can't believe it did this to me I can't believe it did this I can't believe you've done this I mean fair play I didn't get it Christy you win but at what cost? So overall I liked it. I'd probably only give it like three stars if it had more Miss Marple and if the ending was more developed and we got more of an explanation I would have enjoyed it more. I probably would have given it 3.5 maybe a four star at a push. Kind of made me feel very deflated. A little bit un what's the word unsatisfied I'm not satisfied with this one and usually I am very satisfied with murder mysteries but I just got no satisfaction you know I could murder a coffee I need a coffee right now I need it future guy popping in here to tell you I got my coffee <laughs> it's getting so light outside it is I finished the book at what was it like 20 past 5 when did I finish this book I mean it's now 6 a.m. so I might have time for it cheeky little nap. I am hungry but I'll take coffee over food right now I really would. If not I'm gonna have to get a McDonald's breakfast when I land in London. But yeah I guess that's it so thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it. Don't forget to give this video a big like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. What did you think of the vlog? Have you read 450 from Paddington? Do you have any Agatha Christie recommendations or any murder mystery recommendations? A huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my content and making videos like this possible. If you would like to join my Patreon or follow me on any social media then all the links are down in the description box and hopefully i will see you in the next video bye and also good night i totally missed